Buenos días. Uh, feliz sábado. Hoy día de las guadalupanas. Uh, Felicidades a todas, recordando a mi madre con mucho cariño. Um, feliz Navidad. Uh, yo he estado, cuando me fui, fui a visitar a mi madre. Pero uno, que fue un ser muy especial. Uh, Voy a poner algo en Facebook que hoy uh, no, no lo he hecho todavía, pero lo haré así como muchas de ustedes, acordando a sus guadalupanas. Uh, sé que en México cerraron la, la iglesia principal, allá donde va mucha gente a pelenigrar, a pedir por las enfermedades, por la pandemia, así que pues la cerraron por la pandemia, eh, así que pues la gente no, no va a entrar. Yo he tenido la buena fortuna de visitar ahí unas dos, tres veces. Es un lugar mágico, ah, milagroso, hermosísimo. Que doy gracias a Dios por la oportunidad de ir a verlo. Y felicidades a la Dona Lupana. Y hoy les voy a contar un cuento. Porque estas son las fechas ya sea cuando están de las vacaciones, los niños o uh, en estos días se van pronto de, uh, de México a cruzar la frontera porque logran o lograban los días de ir a visitar a, a los padres, a los abuelos, a México. Así que para que lograra, para que costeara el viaje, se iban un poco temprano. Yo que era maestra, sé que mis estudiantes se iban pronto y regresaban hasta después de la Navidad, después del Año Nuevo, quizás más tarde. Y a mí no me molestaba porque sé que al ir para allá es algo muy especial y allá en los ranchos con los abuelos, con los modos antiguos, las, los valores y las tradiciones, también es una buena educación para los hijos. Especialmente cuando no van más que una vez al año o menos. Entonces, este día les voy a contar el cuento <coughs> Going Home, yendo a, a casa. Este libro es un libro muy bonito de Eve Button, Bunting, ilustrado por David Díaz. Así que es uh, algo que... que para mí es muy especial porque este libro se, es de una familia que tiene muchos años acá en California, en los Estados Unidos, pero le llaman home, casa, hogar, a su lugar que dejaron atrás, a México. Y para mí igual yo puedo hacer esa conexión que yo que me vine uh, de Texas, uh, que primero me fui a Illinois, a uh, uh, este, a... Uh, y luego a Colorado, cuando siempre estamos aquí, que di digo que vamos a ir a Texas, siempre decía, we're going home. Para mí, Texas siempre fue mi hogar o my home. Ahora ya con más de 30 años, como que ya, pues, no sé dónde será, cuál es mi hogar en verdad. Porque, pues, aquí ya están mis hijas, mis nietos. Así que ya para mí, aquí es este, aquí es mi hogar. Pero todavía una gran parte de mi corazón está en Texas, en Igle Paz, Texas. Así que es bonito saber que en estas fechas, um, <coughs> que en estas fechas regresamos a ese lugar donde crecimos, donde fuimos a la escuela, donde tuvimos amistades, donde uh, crecimos, donde yo pues en, uh, crecí con mis amigos, me enamoré, me casé y luego ya me fui. Entonces, ese libro es un libro muy bonito, tiene bonitas ilustraciones. Going home quiere decir ir a la casa. Ok. So, este libro lo voy a leer en, en inglés primero porque está en inglés y ese me da tiempo de pensar cómo lo voy a interpretar porque no está en español. Yo lo hago al instante cuando lo voy interpretando. Um, como lo voy viendo, 
Así que I'm going to read this book in English first because it is in English and it's not a bilingual book, but it does have some Spanish words and it's it's all about the me Mexican culture. So there's a lot of things that maybe uh, you can connect with. I will read it in English and then I'll take a break and then do it in Spanish. Uh, lo voy a leer en inglés, así como está escrito el libro. Voy a tomar un descansito, organizarme y luego leerlo en español para ustedes. Okay, Going Home by Eve Bunting, illustrated by David David Diaz. So I made the connection that when I used, when we go to Texas, I always say we're going home because Texas will always be my home, even though this is where my daughters, my grandchildren are. When so this is actually home, but Texas will always have a special part of my heart, just like if you grew up in a place and then you moved away. I don't know if you feel the same way about that. But um, to me, where I grew up will always be home. This has beautiful illustrations. Uh, this is a family. These are farm workers that are going to take a break from... Um, from the fields and take a, a few days to go visit Mexico. We're going home, Carlos, Mama says, hugging me. She sparkles with excitement. Home is here, she says, but it is there too. She and Papa are happy. My sisters and I are not so sure. Mexico is not our home, though we were born there. So these children were brought as little ones when they um, when they were brought to the United States because they were born in Mexico. So here they are packing with the cooler for lunches. We always pack the lunch too to save money, um, and then just squeezed everybody into the into the station wagon or whatever vehicle we had. Papa. Let me see if I can show you this illustration while I'm reading. Papa piles our boxes and suitcases into the back of our old station wagon. He slides in our battered cooler, which is filled with food and cold drinks for the journey. My little sister Nora and my big sister Dolores get into the back seat with me. Nora is five, Dolores is ten. Papa locks the door of our house. The house really belongs to Mr. Culloden, the labor manager, but it is ours as long as we work for the uh, work the crops for him. It has been ours for almost five years. Almost everyone in our camp has come out to see us off. Nora waves to her best friend Maria. Don't be sad, Norita Dolores says. We're going. We're only going for Christmas. You will see Maria again soon. We're on our way. It is a long drive in our parents' village of La Perla to our village of La Perla, and we are a little nervous as we cross the border into Mexico. Are you sure they will let us back, Papa? I ask. Of course, don't worry. We are legal farm workers. We have our papeles. So when my mom used to cross the border too, she would always be nervous because she had a green card, and I know sometimes if people if um people at the at the border were uh, not in a good mood or they would find something like they want to search what you bought or if my dad had a bottle to check in my mom always got nervous for some reason she was afraid they were going to uh, bring us into the office and and ask questions and inspect papers and that so there's always a little nervousness about that so Papa says, uh, papers, Papa, I quickly said. Si, sí, papeles, Papa speaks in Spanish. He and Mama have no English. There is no need for us. There is no need for it in the fields, but I always, I am always trying to teach them. So here they are crossing the border. You can see above where it says, well, um, leaving the United States or welcome to Mexico because they're crossing the border just like we used to do when we go to Texas to visit. 
Now we are in Mexico. I see no difference, but my ma, but my ma does. Mexico, Mexico. She blows kisses at the sun-filled winter sky. In Texas and Mexico, uh, it's not as cold or snowy as in the United States. Every night. Every night, my mom and my sister sleep in the car. Papa and I lay on the ground, wrapped in blankets. I look up at the stars. It's really nice in La Perla. I, is it really nice in La Perla, I ask? See, si, mijo, papa says. The village is small, of course. You told us how pretty it is, I say. Yes, I feel him smile in the dark. Pretty. Then why did you and mama leave? It is the question Dolores and I often ask. We know how hard the work is. The heat in the strawberry fields, the sun pushing down between the rows of tomatoes, and the little flies biting our faces. We know because we work, too, on the weekends and on school vacations. So they're wondering, so why did you leave? It was so pretty. We see how tired my mom and papa are at night, how Papa rubs Mama's shoulders, how stiffly they move. Why did they ever leave, we ask. There's no work in La Perla. We are here for the opportunities. It is always the same answer. Sometimes, behind his back, Dolores imitates Papa. We are here for the opportunities. I don't see them getting many of these wonderful opportunities. Dolores is very grown up and cool. That is what Mama worries about her. Now I lie in Mexico, close to Papa, to watch the shooting stars speed across the sky. I make a wish. So here's the illustration of how night fell upon them on their way to Mexico. And they stay, they spend the night on the roadside. And they, since it's not terribly cold, they'll sleep outside and some will sleep in the car. We used to do that a lot. I remember my brother Daniel, if we would uh, pull over next to, um, to a rest area, he would lay, lay on top of the, on top of, uh, of the cement or concrete table uh, for the rest area. Cause you did, we didn't have a lot of money. It was, hard enough to, to leave and not work and, and spend extra money on on a visit, which was our vacation to see family. Every day we drive through small towns. We wave to the dogs that chase our cars. Always know to ask, is this Bella? And Papa answers, not yet, Nena. So they cross little villages all across Mexico town after town, ranchito after ranchito, packed in their little station wagon. I love going through these little towns, especially when I go to Mexico and I get on that bus from, Mex from uh, Mexico City. And then when I go with my friends and they take me across to other states to stop at the little towns that, that um, work on different crafts, it is just so amazingly wonderful feeling it's a wonderful feeling to be in these little towns to eat the food the fruit to walk their stone um um roads it is just beautiful to eat the fresh fruit um nopales or uh atun, atunas from the nopales or fresh uh, fruit it's just a really special experience we go through beautiful villages where flowers hang from lampposts and the streets are made of smooth, shiny stones. Is this La Perla, Papa? Not yet, my Norita. We're just stopping at the little towns, La Ranchitos. I love eating from the cart. My family would always tell me, you're gonna get sick. Aren't you scared to get sick? But I never was. I loved eating from those places. And here's a bunch of illustrations of what they see along the way. I'll flip this so you can see it. 
We meet buses, we pass men and women on bicycles. We see an old man leading a burro that is piled high with firewood. firewood. He stops to stare. When I go to Mexico, I always see a burro and a man walking next to it with with a wood on it. I, I, I have a picture of it when I went to Quetzalan in uh, Puebla, up in the Sierra Madre. Sometimes we have to go slowly because there are sheep on the road, sheep thick with their winter wool. All kinds of Christmas little picture scenes. This is what this illustrator painted or colored. Here is a little village. I think this is La Perla. On the fourth evening, it takes them three days and the fourth night, they finally get to their home. Perla has stopped asking. We don't know till Mama tells us. Our car, our car bumps along the street, which is decorated for Christmas, with paper cutouts strung together, red and pink and yellow and blue. There is a scattering of houses, a general store, a big water tank, a church with a tinsel star on top, it is like a lot of the villages we have come through. Papa honks the corn, and that brings people to their doors. He rolls down the window. It is Jose and Consuelo and their family. Home for Christmas, he shouts. So this is so cool when people come out to greet them. I remember when I used to get to my mom's house and she knew we were coming, she would always be standing by the door waiting for us with a big pot of menudo or tamales or barbacoa with her homemade tortillas and she would be waiting for us and it was just such a neat 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 experience to get the family hugs and then all of my brothers would come and she because she would call them and say maria is here and they would all come even if it was midnight and we would all hug and greet each other and have something to eat before we went to bed. Jose Consuelo, beautiful children, they say. Have such nice clothes they have, Consuelo. Mama smiles. They're not their best. Children crowd around us and I hear Mama say in a choked voice, this is your grandfather and Aunt Anna. The old man comes out of one of the houses and behind him a tall skinny woman with white black hair. She looks like an umbrella, Dolores whispers and giggles. Nora's making herself small and sucking her thumb. Nora is very shy. There is a wooden plow outside grandfather's house. I remember when my mom and papa saved the money for it. Later they also sent money for the two oxen. I wonder where the oxen are and if we will be friends. Grandfather and aunt hug us. They don't feel like strangers. So, so people that work in the fields work very hard to make the little money they make, but they still save money to send back home to help their family, like the, the dad, to buy them uh, a tractor or some cows so they could uh, continue to make a living in their rancho. So here's everybody gathered at the table, just like at my mom's kitchen. That night, everyone in La Perla comes to grandfather's house. Just like I told you when everybody would come to my mom's house and fill the whole house, the kitchen especially. The walls bulged with talk and remembrings. I have never seen my mom and papa so lively. Such a wonderful feeling for us. My children, not so much because they don't understand, but for me, and my husband, it was just the best feeling. Say something in English, a woman asks me, and everybody is quiet, waiting. I don't know what to say. It's good to be here, I stammer at last. So because they're in Mexico and they don't know how to speak English, they think it's fascinating to hear you speak English. I remember when I was in Quetzalan and uh, in and Aleida would take me for a ride and we would pick up one of the locals there and he was one of the families that I would help. I would take him clothes or give him money and go to their homes. 
he would always guess Aleda to tell Aleda to ask me to say something in English, and I would. And he was also fascinated, fascinated, which was kind of cool when I would say something in English. They laugh and clap. Imagine, Consuelo, your son and all your children speaking English. So smart. Yes, Papa says, the school is very fine. They are getting a good education. The woman nods. You are wise. You were wise to take them and go. Our school is good, too. But where are the opportunities for our children? For our children after? I blink. There is that word again. We were wise, Mama says, but it is hard. It is still hard. She sounds so sad that it scares me. But soon she's laughing again. I am beginning to understand something. So this is something I would try to make my students understand because uh, sometimes they would not do their best in school. And I would tell them that their parents had sacrificed so much for them that they had left family and home behind. Everything they had built, they abandoned to give them a better life the opportunities this dad is talking about so that they needed to do their best so that they could make the sacrifice be worth it. And if they love their parents, this was their best way to show their appreciation by making them proud and working hard in school because that's what they wanted for their children. That was always something I reminded my students of. And I hope they remember that all the time. So this is now where they are. There's no extra rooms. There are no fancy hotels, no guest rooms. So some people stay inside, some on mattresses on the floor or blankets, or outside on some hammocks, whatever space there was. It was late when everybody leaves. Mama and Papa sleep on the floor in Grandfather's house, and we sleep in the car. It is not dark because there is a there is a Christmas coming moon and a few other houses still have friendly lights in their windows. You will be all right, Mama says cheerfully. It is safe here. Nora lies Nora lie between Dolores and me. We wait to talk until she's asleep. Mama and Papa like it here a lot, I whisper. Something big pokes its face against the car window and I jump. But it's only the curious cow that somehow got free. Sometimes these cows kind of roam free because because they're safe and um, so there was no worry for them to roam around. La Perla is pretty, I say, but I thought it would be more special. I thought I thought that was why they liked it. I don't think that's why Dolores begins, and I wait for more, because Dolores knows a lot. But instead, she says, shh, you sleep. So here, the parents come to check on them. Someone is coming out of grandfather's house. It is Mama in her new white get nightgown and Papa in his striped pajamas. I have closed my eyes. My uh, my Mama opens the car door and pulls our blankets higher on us. Angelito, she murmurs. And then, then it is so weird. She and Papa start to dance. There is no music, but they dance barefoot in the street. Dogs unwind themselves and come stiff at their legs. My curious cow watches with interest. Mama and Papa ignore them. Dolores and I stretch our necks to watch. Mama looks so young and beautiful, Dolores whispers, and Papa, so handsome. She has forgotten about her shoulders, I say, and he's forgotten about his bad knees, Dolores adds. So the parents are so happy to be home. They can feel their aches and pains, and they act like a couple in love to be home. So they dance out under the stars as they did when they first fell in love in their rancho. So special. I re and then you wear your best clothes. I remember, uh, you know, we would always buy clothes so that we could, we went places 
we would wear, we would be at our best. So it's always a special time to go back home. And here is this beautiful illustrations of the of the parents dancing and enjoying enjoying that evening, watching their children asleep in their mother's rancho. I remember when I took my grandchildren, I drove them with me to Texas. And it was such a joy for me to see them fill my mom's house with, um, with their presents. It was so lively and special day. All the cousins would come to meet with us and join us, and we'd have cookouts. It was just wonderful to have all my grandkids that one year I drove with all of them to my mom's house. It was just a very special summer that when we went. They dance and dance. Papa's cheek is against Mama's hair and I see that he is whispering to her. I feel as if I shouldn't be watching and I lie down again. Dolores does too. After a while, we hear grandfather's door close, and we can tell they're gone inside. It is, there is a terrible ache in my chest. They love it here because it's home. They left home for us, Carlos, Dolores says. Do you know Mama and Papa are, are saving money? They plan to come back Sunday and live in grandfather's house and work his land. For sure, I ask. For sure, Dolores says. I listen when they talk. They make me smile. I, I know Dolores listens. That's why she knows so much. Good, I say, and I think it will be after our opportunities. So they're planning to come back home. A lot of people send money and they have a lot and they're building a home with the hopes of someday going back home. I know a lot of my parents have that dream, but sometimes it's hard because there's not a lot of work in Mexico, unfortunately, as there is here. Even migrant workers make more money than, than somebody working in Mexico, so it's hard to live in Mexico. So that's always a yearning, uh, a wish that they could go home and, and go back to their land. And some of them should die in the United States. We always want to be taken back home to be buried because that is their land, their home, that they want to rest in, that they wish they could go back to at times. I picture them back there dancing in the streets of La Perla, and I lie there watching the moon shine on the Christmas star till I fall asleep. So here's the rancho where they are. Not anything special, but really special for them. And so the children are learning why it is special, and why parents love going home so much, and why they left home behind for them to give them opportunities, a better life than they had. And that is exactly what um, my father, when he left Piedras Negras and started migrating, and then we moved into the States. He wanted his family to have a better life. And here I am because I had the opportunity that I maybe would not have had in Mexico if I would have been born there and lived there. So it is always good to think about the sacrifices parents did for us so that we could have a better life. So that is the story going home. I think it's a beautiful story because at this time a lot of kids do go home. Before I let you go, oh, I made myself a tea. So good. Um, I want to show you something that I do. I started collecting. This morning, I went to get tamales. I have my tamal because I'm going to have it for breakfast in a little bit. I also picked up some uh, galletitas mexicanas from the Mexican store and some mojarascas. I do have a recipe. Maya, my friend from uh, my, my sister-in-law's sister, makes the most wonderful mojarascas. But I bought them 
because I like to make um, Christmas baskets for piñatas, when we break a piñata, or just to give to the kids. So I got um, these Mexican cookies that are so good. I sent some to my granddaughters in, in Florida, and these hojarascas that are not homemade, but I think they are good. And then a fruit. And I also have, I can't remember these candies. So these are Mexican candies. If you, can, if you can tell me what they are, please let me know. Uh, I just can't think of the name. But these are um, from Mexico. They're very traditional candies to put in your candy bags for the posadas. When I was little, we used to have those. And uh, they would put peanuts on there and maybe a little piece of caña. And then I went and got little candy canes and some American candy just to mix it up a little bit. So what I do, sometimes I have Mexican um, bags that I get at the Dulceria and Piedras. But here I'm going to show you what I would do. I couldn't find my my red or green ribbon or yellow ribbon, so I'm going to use this little string and, and decorate it with a bow. But what I do, I know that maybe you do this a lot, is maybe you take an orange or a little, um, what do you call this, clementine, the little oranges, and you take some, some of each of the cookies, some of these sparkly ones and the ojarascas, maybe one of each color of the candy, the three colors, maybe um, you could put some peanuts in there only because these are just the olden traditional candies and i didn't go to mexico to get me some traditional candy and i might get some ones from the mexican store so you would put some of that in there and maybe some of these i just can't think of the name they have like a little seed of uh, something inside that gives you a little kick. It's really good. So you put some of that in there. Maybe a trocito de caña, a little piece of sugar cane, which is traditional in Mexico. Then you would take a piece of ribbon. I'm going to take this little string. Always improvising. Always using what you have if you can't find what you need or can't afford it. You have to be resourceful. So you tie it up. And then if you use the Christmas colors, they look really pretty. Then you then you drop it in a, in a basket, and they look very pretty. So everybody gets a Christmas tree with a traditional candy. So you would fill this in a basket, and then you would pass them out. So those are... That is what I wanted to, sh the story I wanted to share with you today. I'm going to take a break. I will come back and do this in Spanish in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So I am going to just reorganize and then come back. So I hope you enjoyed the story going home. I am going to line up some more stories. And maybe I'll do more when you come, uh, when you're out for a Christmas break to tell more stories and do more things. I th I'm going to start setting up the gingerbread houses so that I can do one and see how many I can deliver and see how many get picked up so I can give them away. So I hope you enjoy going home. If teachers and moms, if you would like to order this book, uh, it's by Eve Bunting and David. Yes, did the illustrations. So a nice Christmas story to remember going home if you moved away and how, what a special feeling that is. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoy telling you these stories because it brings back memories. All right, so take care and I will see you in about 10 minutes. All right. <laughs>